This is the Vatican, as it's never been seen before. From the life of the highest ranking officials. This job doesn't give me much of a private life. There's some, but not much. To the men and women working every day to keep this unique city-state running. Well, oh boy, I'm a fashion model Perfecto. now. <laughs> We've been filming inside the Vatican for over a year. It's been a time of change. The church is always in need of reform. Pope Francis is not a liberal. He's not a conservative. He's a radical. La Chiesa quest'anno ha vissuto e vive momenti difficili. And the church has faced one of its biggest challenges for a generation. An explosive report alleging a cover-up of Catholic priest sex abuses dating back decades. It is looking like in a mirror where you see the face of a monster. So either you take it on or it will take you on. Inside the Vatican, cardinals, bishops and priests are gathering in the Sala Clementina for a meeting of the Curia Romana. This is the central governing body of the Catholic Church. Its members are waiting for Pope Francis to give his annual address. Fare le riforme a Roma è come pulire la sfinge di Egitto con uno spazzolino da denti. Pope Francis is a reformist and he's shaking up the clerical establishment. He's questioning traditional attitudes to divorce and homosexuality. And he's not shy about confronting his opponents. I traditori di fiducia si lasciano corrompere dall'ambizione o dalla vanagloria e quando vengono delicatamente allontanate si autodichiarano erroneamente martiri del sistema invece di recitare il mea culpa. There's always institutional resistance to change. It comes at a price, and the price sometimes can be moving out of your comfort zone, do things that you prefer not to do, or to do things in a way that you're not to do, learn new skills. Well, you know, none of, some, some of us, you know, don't uh, like to do that, or maybe don't want to do it, just you know, leave me alone or do that when I've, when I've retired. I think the majority of people see that what he is trying to do is important and valid for the future of the church. Every Wednesday, Pope Francis addresses the crowd in St. Peter's Square. Today, he has a surprise. Sono lieto di annunciare che il 29 giugno terrò un concistoro per la nomina di 14 nuovi cardinali. La loro provenienza esprime la universalità della Chiesa. 
for Pope Francis, appointing new cardinals at the consistory is a chance to influence the choice of who will succeed him. The College of Cardinals will elect the new pope at the next conclave. One of the big changes Pope Francis has brought in is his, his selection of cardinals. In the past, he used to, there was a way of choosing cardinals. They were a certain position in the church meant you were a cardinal. Francis has completely upended that. So he's chosen cardinals from Tonga, Madagascar, Iraq, and showing that the church is out in the world, away from the centers of power. Monsignor Joseph Kutz. Monsignore Desiree Sarazana. Christopher Lamb is a journalist who's been following the Pope's every move for the last five years. Warm plans or have a good lunch. That's what he always says, buon pranzo. And the first moment he came out onto the balcony, he started with Buona Sera when he was, after he was elected. And that, was, that set the tone for the, the style of, of Pope that he has been. Almost like someone who you can, you can talk to, you can confess to, like your parish priest. But not everyone is as impressed by this new informality. Sandro Magister is an influential journalist who's been reporting on the Catholic Church for over 50 years. I have a judgment quite critical in the face of this populism in a papal form. Perché effettivamente, eh, a mio giudizio, snatura quello che è uno dei, dei caratteri fondamentali del, eh, della Chiesa, da secoli. Ora, la Chiesa ha una storia che si è costruita. Ecco, questo pontificato segna una rottura, una rottura proprio nella, nella grande storia della Chiesa. Pope Francis is very demanding and expects the best from the ones who work in the Vatican. He expects the best of every Catholic. Buongiorno. 2,600 people work inside the Vatican. They've had to adapt to this Pope's individual management style. The Virgin of Silence tells about the importance of silence, actually, rather than gossiping. And indeed, Pope Francis wanted to have this icon here to send a message to everyone. It's the place where everyone passes by before going to work. So Pope Francis sends very clear messages, and he likes to use images also to send uh, messages, strong messages. Stop gossiping in the Vatican. Ci sono dei cardinali che ne arrivano due o tre lunedì e martedì. Il tempo è molto ristretto, eh sì, devo consegnare tutto, perlomeno due giorni prima. Ecco qua. Io lavoro qua, ho, ho veramente l'onore di servire Giovanni Paolo II, ho fatto tanti da Lari a Benedetto, io ne ho fatte proprio tanti, e anche a Francesco. Questo lavoro qui è un lavoro che si è fatto per tanti secoli. Oramai non lo fa più nessuno. 
oggi sono le macchine che fanno tutto e io ancora voglio farle così a mano tagliate a mano e fatte a mano Ecco, questo si indossa al giorno della cerimonia. A stirare. Pope Francis' influence is felt even here. Papa Francesco non accetta le cose molto eccentriche di una volta. Il tessuto delle talari è un tessuto di lana e terita molto molto semplice, molto umile. Invece di solito si fa o di lano la nesseta, che è un pochettino più morbida, più bella. Lui accetta, vuole questi tessuti più semplici e più umili. <ride> Detto così, <ride> senza critica, <ride> una piccola osservazione. Ce n'è sta uno che non voleva indossare quest'abito. Dalle parti sue non so di dove è. Pakistan. Pakistan che vanno vestiti molto semplicemente i preti e lui è un monsignore molto molto semplice e questa cosa qui dice ma io non la metto, non la indosso dico ma purtroppo il colore è questo e deve accettarlo com'è I'm going to Mancinelli, the tailor to pick up all my red stuff. The red zucchetto, the beretta, the talare. One has to be completely red, and I'm told it's just not just red, it's scarlet. Why is it red? Well, I guess it's tradition. The cardinals wearing red, the bishops in purple, the pope is always in white. I've been given a complete list of what I need. Even the socks will be red. Buonasera. Buonasera, Eminenza. That's frightening. Buonasera. Buonasera. Come stiamo? Grazie, bene. Vogliamo provare l'abito? I was first a pastor in Lahore, the second largest city of Pakistan. And I was sitting in my office, and then the parish priest comes up with his mobile telephone in his hand. He says, Bishop, Bishop, congratulations. I said, what's gone wrong? He says, you've been made cardinal. I said, now come on, stop joking. Don't you have anything else to do? Ha mangiato poco questo giorno. Vedo che è dimagrito, poco poco. I wanted to be an engineer, and gradually I became more convinced, but uh, even my elder brother sort of looked surprised. He said, what, you're going to be a priest? As if to say, couldn't you find something better to do? You know, that kind of thing. Good. Good? Certo. My mother was very happy, I know that. Oh boy, I'm a fashion model Perfetto. now. Perfetto. <laughs> <laughs> my dad just said to me, you better look sharp now. Questo è il rocchetto. rocchetto. Questo? Mozzetta. 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 I'm not chosen cardinal because I was the most capable person, but it's also the choice of the country. E questo che va così. There were always certain important places or big cities of the world uh, that say, oh, there must be a cardinal from there. But I think what Pope Francis is saying is, there are these smaller churches. They need to have also a proper representation in the church. Adesso... Zucchetto. Lo zucchetto. Lo lo, yes. E la berretta no. non io, Francesco. <laughs> huh? E la forma è questa. Ecco qua. Così. Io sono pronto adesso. <laughs> Bene. Per essere cardinalizzato. Mira, da solo, guardi se si piace. Come? Se si vuole guardare allo specchio. No, no, no. Eh, no. no. <laughs> un minuto, un po' di vanità. 
Oi, oi, oi. Una volta nella vita, basta. <laughs> Mamma mia. As you see, there are a lot of changes taking place inside the Catholic Church. We are still very keep to a lot of ceremonies and traditions from the past, like this red hat. But these are not things we wear and walk around with. So we take them for what they are. Con Papa Francesco eh, la bellezza è che ogni volta che lo si incontrava anche in Vaticano veniva fuori la sua semplicità, ti salutava davvero come eh, un amico. Io cerco di allenarmi durante la settimana quando trovo il tempo, sul lungo Tevere, e cerco anche di allenarmi un po' in giro per Roma, che almeno si riesce a scaricare un po' tutte le tensioni, gli impegni che si hanno ed è un bel momento di relax. Don Luigi is a priest. He's been living inside the Vatican since he first arrived as a 12-year-old altar boy. Dove stiamo andando? Stiamo andando a celebrare la messa alla Cappella Clementina. Adesso entriamo dalla porta della preghiera. Buongiorno, carissimo. Buona giornata. Ho avuto la gioia e la fortuna di essere chierichetto di tutti e tre i papi che ho conosciuto. Di Giovanni Paolo II, di Papa Benedetto XVI e di Papa Francesco. Every morning, Don Luigi says mass in one of the nine chapels beneath St. Peter's Basilica. Alla Cappella Clementina. Built nearly 1,500 years ago, the Clementina Chapel is one of Christianity's most sacred places. è un qualcosa che eh, uno sente già da piccolo. Amen. Durante il percorso di formazione del seminario è naturale che ci siano momenti o difficoltà o ostacoli da superare. Però se uno fa affidamento davvero al Signore si può davvero capire e superare ogni tipo di difficoltà. Parola del Signore. Lode a te, Cristo. Buonasera. Tutto bene? Salve. Come stai? Ciao. I spogliatori sono di qua? Sì. La missione del sacerdote non è solamente all'interno della chiesa quando fa la messa, ma deve essere in tutti i campi durante tutta la giornata. Io penso anche sul campo sportivo. A destra Cao, a sinistra Gioca Daniele. Tre quartista dietro all'altra punta, la linea centro capisti Don Luigi e la punta avanzata Daniele. Ok? The Vatican has its own football league, fielding teams from different departments, such as the Swiss Guards and the Gendarmerie. Don Luigi, nove. Don Luigi is playing for the telecoms department against the administration office. Quando gli arriva il pallone, io sto a posto! 
è bello trovarsi e riunirsi insieme anche in un momento che è extra da quello che si fa in Vaticano e quindi è bello condividere anche sul campo quelli che sono i valori dell'amicizia. Buona donna, dai, ancora donna! Ah. Scusa, scusa, scusa. Che ha pensato? Eh, ci mi il E devo dire che è anche molto competitivo il campionato. Agorita, faticosa con questo freddo, poi io avevo un piccolo infortunio ma ho giocato tutto, tutta la partita, quindi va bene così. Da Luigi, grossa prestazione, la televisione gli ha fatto bene. Grazie mister. Ciao, ciao. Miglior mister, eh. as the day of the consistory for new cardinals draws near. More of the Pope's appointees are coming to Rome. Tunga Yarahabanoa Amzoa Nazawanoa Farindrena Masna Vemni Papare Masna U Cardinal Neglisi Malagasso. Ne parmi le pays les plus pauvres du monde. Chez nous, il n'y a pas de route pour visiter les gens. Et à Tamatav, j'ai déjà fait trois jours de marche. Je n'ai jamais imaginé dans ma vie qu'un jour je ferai partie de, de pouvoir élire un pape. C'est magnifique. C'est beau à voir. Je n'ai jamais effectué mes études d'ici à Rome. La chose qui est difficile pour moi, c'est la différence euh, linguistique. Bonjour. Bonjour. C'est bon. Peut-être que je vais faire encore plus d'efforts à étudier la langue italienne. Voilà, c'est indéniable. Voilà. Là. Paolo Francesco ha cambiato la fisionomia del collegio cardinalizio, in particolare nominando delle persone che lui ha voluto rappresentassero le periferie del mondo. Non nominando cardinali, i titolari di diocesi importanti dell'Europa e del Nord America, i cui titolari sono sempre stati generalmente dei cardinali nominando anche tra l'altro delle persone sconosciute ha reso il collegio cardinalizio a mio giudizio meno rappresentativo uh, uh, del, del corpo dirigente della chiesa e questo sarà secondo me un problema non da poco nel prossimo conclave saranno tra di loro degli sconosciuti e quindi non avranno facilità nel accordarsi sulla nomina del successore di Papa Francesco. In the Abbey of Trisulti, outside Rome, a new organization has been set up to defend the traditional values of the Catholic Church. So do you live here? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
360 days a year. 365 days and nights a year. Benjamin Harnwell, originally from Leicester, runs a conservative think tank. He questions some of the Pope's innovations. One of the concerns is that the Pope isn't defending the integrity of the faith that has been held for 2,000 years, but he's using his authority as Pope to introduce novelties um, which have never been held or believed before in the history of the church and to impose those novelties onto the, on, onto the faithful. It's my study here. Great. Hey. Nobody's against openness. The point is that the church in any age, but especially the present age of the 21st century, has to get out there into the public square and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Has to do that. Jesus Christ, in his great commission, didn't tell anybody to go out and hold conferences on global warming. Questa nostra casa si sta rovinando. Pope Francis is outspoken about climate change. Che tipo di mondo desideriamo trasmettere a coloro che verranno dopo di noi? Per il bene della casa comune e delle future generazioni, ogni sforzo dovrebbe essere rivolto ad attenuare gli impatti dei cambiamenti climatici. Pope is leading by example. He set up a recycling center inside the Vatican. Il riciclaggio è un nuovo progetto, un nuovo lavoro. Separiamo tutto, dal materiale organico, la plastica, il metallo. Raffaele Tornini is the man in charge of the recycling scheme. Qua noi abbiamo, pressiamo il cartone e escono fuori le balle. Buongiorno, a posto? Il riciclaggio per il Vaticano è molto importante perché comunque dà un risalto a quello che il Papa ha dato come linea guida, la salvaguardia del pianeta. They have a way to go. Today 49% of the Vatican waste is recycled. They're aiming for 80% by 2025. Per esempio l'olio alimentare l'anno scorso avevamo raccolto in tutto l'anno 1.000-1.200 litri, quest'anno siamo sui 2.500-2.600 litri. Well, the cardinals who are going to be made to made cardinal by Pope Francis are coming to the press office in the Vatican to talk to journalists to introduce themselves uh, to the world because a lot of the cardinals who Pope Francis makes are obscure figures who no one knows. Christopher Lamb is about to attend a press conference with the cardinal-to-be Louis Sacco from Iraq. Lui parla italiano, inglese, francese, credo che anche tedesco. E quindi facciamo. Arabo, arabo. Arabo. Anche arabo, anche arabo, anche arabo. Ho dimenticato. Welcome. Can you tell us, uh, Cardinal, what the role of Christians is, or the situation for Christians is like at the moment in Iraq? Rispondo in inglese o. Well, you know, we all are Iraqi citizens, so it doesn't matter. I am Christian, you are Muslim, I believe or I'm not, I am free. Nobody can, you know, force you. What Francis has done is taken away the rule book when it comes to appointing cardinals. The Pope is thinking about 
appointing men who aren't the power brokers, the power players in the clerical machinery. He, he's so close to them. And it's as if Pope Francis is saying that is where the, the center of the church should be, in these places that are often forgotten. So the periphery has become the central part. Iraqi pilgrims from all over the world have come to St. Peter's Basilica for a very special event. They are celebrating the nomination of Cardinal Sacco with a mass in ancient Aramaic. I was born in Iraq and there was a conflict in our village between Christians and Muslims. Uh, we were obliged to leave the, the, the village. And when I finished my studies, I came to Rome and we met with the Pope. And he said to me, what are you going to do? Maybe I will be a soldier. He said, no, you will be not a soldier. You, will, you should go to the seminary to be a priest. My father had a very nice voice. He was always singing the mass with the bishop. Can you remember any song? Maybe <clears throat> I will sing something in Arabic yes, or in Chaldean. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The day of the consistory for new cardinals has arrived. In less than one hour, Pope Francis will officially appoint the new cardinals. Over the centuries, cardinals were considered princes of the church. I remember at the last consistory two years ago, when the new cardinals were made, Pope Francis was very clear he said, you are not being made princes of the church. You are pastors. Santo Padre, a nome mio e dei miei fratelli nuovi cardinali, vi ringrazio vostra santità per la fiducia riposta in noi e per averci chiamati a servire la Chiesa. It's quite a simple ceremony. Each of the cardinal arrive wearing their red and they go up to the Pope and are given a red beretta hat. I didn't expect this coming at this age when I thought, oh boy, I better start thinking about my retirement. And they're given a scroll which is an oath of their loyalty to the office of St. Peter to symbolize their role. And then afterwards, we have what's called the courtesy visits, whereby anyone, any member of the public, can go and say hello to the new cardinals. <laughs> Europe for, for centuries controlled the College of Cardinals and the election of Pope. Now, 
the College of Cardinals, the Cardinals are outside of Europe and in the, the global south, in Africa, in Asia. That's a, a huge shift. Um, and I think that shows that the church is changing. To be a cardinal doesn't just mean to be the prince of the church, but to be out in the front line, being ready to give your life, even to the point of martyrdom. Some people say the next conclave is going to be an almighty battle. <laughs> um, you've got those chosen by you know, this Pope with his particular vision of reform and ones by John Paul II and Benedict who perhaps might have seen things differently. And that's what the Pope wants. The Pope was always, always talking about the God of surprises. He doesn't want things to follow a nice, steady, sure path. And a lot of people in the church aren't happy about that. At the end of the month, Pope Francis is going to Ireland. It will be the first papal visit for 40 years. But two weeks before the Pope's trip, the church is rocked by scandals. An explosive report alleging a cover-up of Catholic priest sex abuses dating back decades. A grand jury in Pennsylvania just issued its report. It found evidence of more than 300 predator priests, all accused of sexually abusing more than 1,000 child victims. What you had was a perfect storm of events. You had Pennsylvania. And then he went into Ireland within that context. So the whole thing kind of exploded over that, over that August weekend. Pope Francis will be flying into the eye of another storm because Ireland sits right at the center of the child sex abuse scandals that have rocked the church worldwide. Ireland is the ground zero of the clerical sexual abuse crisis in the Catholic Church. They have been dealing with this since the late 1990s. It's not only the thousands of victims of sexual abuse within the church, but it's the cover-ups by church leaders and by bishops, not only in Ireland, but across the world. There have been thousands of victims worldwide. Each year, the Vatican processes hundreds of cases of priests accused of abuse. I think it was the toughest trip of his papacy. He wanted to go to Ireland because there was a meeting of families, but it turned into a very difficult trip because the whole narrative was about clerical sexual abuse scandals. It would be wrong if the Pope went to Ireland and just didn't mention the elephant in the room. I mean, this is a huge crisis. Il fallimento delle autorità ecclesiastiche, vescovi, superiori religiosi, sacerdoti e altri nell'affrontare adeguatamente questi crimini repugnanti ha giustamente suscitato indignazione e rimane causa di sofferenza e di vergogna per la comunità cattolica. In una lettera al popolo di Dio ho ribadito l'impegno, anzi un maggior impegno per eliminare questo flagello nella Chiesa. That's a big shift in the papacy. The Pope has said, yes, we can make mistakes, and we're sorry, and we're going to try and sort this issue out. Now, of course, some people, they say it's not good enough. I have met the Holy Father, Pope Francis, five or six times now. He has brought up the issue a lot and put it on the agenda of the whole world. Father Hans Zollner is not just a priest in Rome, but also a psychologist and one of the leading experts on sexual abuse working in the Catholic Church. He has served on Pope Francis's special commission for the protection of minors since 2014. 
No, lo sapevo, avevo solo chiamato Sicuno sì, la sì, sì, certo, padre, certo. Però lo sapevo, avevo di me il padre, grazie a lei. There have been committed cover-ups that I could not imagine possibly uh, to happen uh, if you are honest, if you are serious about your Christian, Catholic, religious life. This is, goes against my ideals, our ideals. This is going to stay with us for a very long time and we need to face it. If we don't face it actively, it will come back to us in one way or another. So either you take it on or it will take you on. I trained as a psychologist and psychotherapist in the mid-90s. We were certainly among the very few psychology students in any kind of university worldwide that learned something specific about sexual violence and uh, uh, what is called sexual de deviances, like sadism or masochism or voyeurism or pedophilia. Society needs to reach a certain level of willingness and preparedness to take this on, because it is looking like in, in a mirror where you see uh, the face of a monster and, and nobody wants to really face uh, that easily and is uncomfortable with it, of course. <clears throat> There is the sense of, within the church, a priest can do whatever he wants to do without being responsible for it. So because I am a priest, I can take whatever I wish, and be it sexual encounter with a young person. So let us pause for a moment. Of course, this is a huge crisis in terms of lack of trust, lack of confidence, because who else is supposed to live what he preaches, if not a priest? Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. The anger justified about the cover-up is the expression of a deep disappointment, uh, because the standard was seen and has been presented like this high. And what has been done was that low. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Al mondo d'oggi sicuramente si vive una persecuzione mediatica, nel senso che soprattutto la Chiesa eh, vediamo che è attaccata sotto tutti i punti di vista. Sicuramente sentire casi in cui i ministri della Chiesa vengono accusati di questi abusi non rende facile la vita di tutti quanti i sacerdoti. Purtroppo al mondo d'oggi si rischia di pensare alla Chiesa solamente sotto questo punto di vista. Invece ci sono tante testimonianze belle in cui i sacerdoti davvero donano la loro vita quotidianamente 24 ore su 24 e a Dio. Every week, Don Luigi leaves the Vatican and travels to a parish on the outskirts of Rome. Adesso camminiamo 5 minuti e siamo alla parrocchia. Il giovedì e il venerdì vengo qui in chiesa e mi occupo di fare la messa e poi seguire i ragazzi adolescenti. camice e mi preparo per la messa. Perché l'hai baciata? 
perché il simbolo sacerdotale si usa a baciarlo e quindi siamo pronti per iniziare la messa, è una tradizione. Con i giovani, con i ragazzi, naturalmente ho a che fare con generazioni che sono eh, della mia stessa portata, ecco. Il Signore sia con voi. Ed è bello poter trasmettere ai ragazzi un insegnamento che è quello della religione, dove si fa capire davvero quella che è la propria fede e si cerca loro di trasmetterla e di rispondere anche un po' a quelle che sono le tante domande e le curiosità che i ragazzi ti pongono. Fate questo in memoria di me. Don Luigi's hopes for the Catholic Church lie with these young people. But the future is uncertain. Across Europe and North America, church attendance is falling sharply. It's a challenge for reformers and conservatives alike. At the moment, we're closing churches. And this is a situation we're seeing right across the Western world. My dad gave me these mugs, Leicester City. These problems in the church are here because of a lack of faith right across the church, right across the laity, the bishops, the priests. If we don't hold the Catholic faith, we're not going to attract anyone towards it, and we're not going to attract anyone into it with, with, in terms of vocations, right? That is the crisis that the Catholic Church has. Um, and I would like to see attention dedicated on that crisis. Things have changed, and they've changed very radically in South Liverpool, where I came from. The church which I went to now, sadly, is uh, no longer uh, an, uh, an active church. They've sort of decommissioned it all. And as I, when I drive past it, when I go home, It's really sad to think there's the church where I grew up, where I went to church with my family, the church where I celebrated my first mass as a priest, and it's no longer being used as a place of worship. That's hard to cope with. One would always like a certain permanence in one's life. But it is certainly an indication that things have changed. And the question remains, have they really changed for the better? There is something waiting for us. We don't know now how it will look like. We don't have the answers now. But of course, of course, uh, there will be a Catholic Church with a different face. At the Pontifical Gregorian University in Rome, Father Hans Zollner and his colleagues have set up postgraduate training courses in child protection. They want to make sure that the clerical sex abuse scandal will not be repeated in future generations. This is the first university that offers an academic degree in the area of safeguarding. Morning. Good job. Good job. We need specialists that are really capable of not only executing guidelines, putting them into place, but also developing them, elaborating them, updating them, 
in dialogue with science, with police, uh, with the, the law system in the country. Contact versus virtual sexual abuse of children. So we need people who are more knowledgeable, more competent and more prepared to do whatever can be done so that young people are safe. Good morning, everybody. In your groups, you tackled several issues with regard to sexual online exploitation in greater depth. And today, as we've said, you are going to present the results to your peers, to all of us. The Catholic Church is a much more complex reality than people perceive. How can we come up with a much more consistent picture and reality of who is responsible for what and who is accountable for what? We don't have that. Girls are more often asked for sexually explicit pictures. You sent me one taking your bra off or whatever. They are more often contacted with a desire to get pictures. This is an area which not many people speak easily. Are there any questions? It's coming up now. But still there is an uncomfortableness and a lack of willingness to really take it on as a society and as a church. They feel that excitement on curiosity and self-exploration. One thing attracting them is the digital world, the media. There is much need for preparing a different generation of people through education and formation. This is not an immediate um, solution for anything, but it is the start for a better future. It's the week before Christmas. Once again, the Curia Romana is about to gather inside the Vatican to hear from Pope Francis. Mm. Where are we going? We're going to the Sala Clementina, which is on the same floor that we're on now. We go along the Raphael Gallery, past the bust of Raphael. We're going there because the Pope is to receive the Christmas greetings from the members of the Curia Romana. And it gives him the opportunity also to make this major speech. Well, this is what we've done, this is what we need to do, and you can be very sure that this is a very faithful reflection of his thought at this time. I corsi di Papa Francesco alla Curia Romana alla vigilia di Natale sono sempre delle grandi sorprese. Cari fratelli, ogni anno eh, una sorpresa diversa. Nel mondo turbolento la barca della Chiesa quest'anno ha vissuto e vive momenti difficili ed è stata investita da tempeste e uragani, abusi di potere, di coscienza e sessuali. Tanti disvalorditi dalle notizie hanno iniziato a perdere la fiducia in essa e abbandonarla. The Pope has been quite tough on them. He is the Pope. <laughs> he is their boss. Um, when he says something, he expects people to do it. L'essere cristiani e per noi in particolare consacrati del Signore non significa comportarci come una cerchia di privilegiati che credono di avere Dio in tasca. Generalmente Papa Francesco si colloca dalla parte del popolo eh, contro le istituzioni, contro le elite. E nonostante il Papa in realtà faccia parte di questa istituzione, lui riesce a presentarsi al mondo, al grande pubblico, come una persona esterna a questa istituzione, capace quindi di criticarla. Anche oggi ci sono tanti unti del Signore, uomini consacrati che abusano dei deboli, 
spesso dietro la loro smisurata gentilezza, impeccabile operosità e angelica faccia, nascondono spudoratamente un lupo atroce pronto a divorare le anime innocenti. It was a tough speech. It was very challenging. It was very, um, although it was very hard and uncompromising on things that are wrong in the church, at the same time, it was very much, um, I thought, a profoundly Christian message. Il Natale ci dona ogni anno la certezza che la luce di Dio continuerà a brillare nonostante la nostra miseria umana. La certezza che la Chiesa uscirà da queste tribolazioni, ancora più bella e purificata e splendida. This is opportunity. This is time for grace. He was trying to pick people up. He's trying to raise the church up and say, look, we can do this together. Il Natale dà la certezza che la vera forza della Chiesa e del nostro lavoro giornaliero tante volte nascosto. Grazie tante, buon Natale a tutti. It was classic Pope Francis, but it was a hopeful and encouraging uh, message in the end. Pope Francis is trying to try model the church as he sees it. And some people are saying, well, the answer is to be very traditionalist, to project the old style of the church. And the Pope completely rejects that idea. It's got to be a church that's relevant to people, that engages with people, that is credible, that is a credible representation of the gospel. I always say that I'm a journalist first and a Catholic second. In terms of my personal faith, I have found it you know, very difficult at times when you are covering the sexual abuse crisis, when you're reading a failure to handle the cases properly by bishops, and it's extremely difficult. And you, and you sometimes think, well, you know, is the whole enterprise in some kind of fundamental disarray? what is going on here, you do feel those, you have those moments, I think, of desolation. However, I think when you see um, Pope Francis or the church's work on the, on the ground, when you see that firsthand, when you see St. Peter's Square filled with people from every culture and background for an event, when you see a world leader in the form of Pope Francis trying to bring a message of hope to terrible situations, then yeah, that is inspiring. And then you think, well, actually, there is something the church has. Please don't give up. We need to continue the journey. Even if you know that it will be a demanding, unnerving, embarrassing. But there is no way. Well, what else can we do? Give up? No. Details of organisations offering information and support with sexual abuse are available at the BBC Action Line website, or you can call free at any time to hear recorded information on 0800 077 077.